Assalamu alaikum and greetings. The task is on toroid which has a rectangular cross section. So we have a toroid with rectangular cross section shown here. There is n loops of conductor from copper wire with constant current I. So we have n loops of wire with constant current I. The magnetic permeability is the same as magnetic permeability of air. Calculate magnetic flux density inside toroid. So calculate magnetic flux density inside a toroid. We need to calculate it inside here. How do we do that? The same way using Ampere's law, we can always calculate our magnetic field, which says that it is mu zero times sum of all currents or mu zero times integral g d s. But so our first thing we need to calculate it inside the torus, no problem. Then let's calculate. Inside a torus, which means I will choose my cross contour inside a torus with radius r. So radius r, this is my cross contour, so this is dl and l. Now, or the opposite direction, it doesn't matter. But we need to determine the direction of B. How do we determine direction of B if we have toroids? Well, two things are important. The direction of current and the way from which this conductor is wound, is curved. As you can see here, uh, this conductor firstly goes down below, if, if this is a torus, below a torus then goes this and this is the, the direction of our current but here it goes from inside and goes from up and goes towards you for example because of uh, this the direction is determined that you put your hands in the way in the direction of current but if i analyze this here so the current this is the direction of current so i'm putting my fingers towards the table but very important thing is that this first conductor goes below a torus, not up. So because of that, I must put, this is torus, I must put my fingers below and in the direction of current, and I curve my fingers in the direction of current. As you can see, if I curve my fingers, I will get this direction, exactly this direction. And my thumb says what is the direction of B. So my, the direction of B is this. So it goes in this way. You can choose any part of a conductor. Well, let's say, let's choose this part of a conductor. So we, we see that this uh, uh, direction of current is up, but it must be f above this toroid which means I put my fingers in this direction, I curl it and I see what is the direction of my magnetic field at this point. And you can see that at every point the direction is this. But let's say that our magnetic field, that our torus was this, and that magnetic field was in this direction, and this was the current. What would we got? So now, here, we had to put our fingers below our torus, but here, no, we must put our fingers above our torus, which would give us, curl our fingers in this direction, which would give us that the magnetic field has the opposite direction than in this case. So, if you want to change a direction of magnetic field, you can either change a current direction or change this the way of wounding these loops will you go firstly from above and then below or firstly from below and then above of our torus so in our case dl and b has the same direction we are analyzing what does this mean well it only says that uh -huh, inner radius of this inner circle is a outer radius is b and that's it 
but we need only to find p as a function inside a torus. So we did that. This is integral b times dl times cosine angle between b and dl. The angle is zero, which equals me zero times. Now we don't have a cross section of conductor, so that we must use this. No, our contour. Inside our contour, there are currents. Ah, so where is the current here? Ah, for example, has. comes from in this direction. So this is the direction of current I. Here, this is the direction. Here, this is the direction. Here, this. Here, this. Here, this. So this is one I, second I, inside of my surface, inside my contour. Third, fourth, fifth. So how many I's do I have inside my contours? Well, I have N because I have N loops of my conductor, it means that sum of our current is actually n times i, because the current is the same for all, and I have n i's. Very important thing is that this is algebra, uh, this is uh, uh, algebraic sum, which means you must take in consideration plus and minus the direction of currents. So what would happen if we took this surface. So we are calculating outside the outside of toroid. Well, in that case, what would be the sum of i? Well, still we would have these i's, n times i, but also here, what do we have here? Here we have a current which goes towards the table, this direction. So we also have n times these i's. But this and this have opposite direction, so the sum of i's in these in this case would be zero. So it is very important to know that this sum you must take in consideration the direction of currents. If the direction of currents, if the currents are opposite, you must subtract subtract them. But we are calculating only inside, which means the, we have these currents n times i, here we will have b, we can put in front of integral, we will have integral of dl which is l, but what is l? It is actually our length of our circle with radius r, and we, we can calculate it to our pi, which equals me 0 n times i, so b is equal me 0 n times i divided to r. So this is our magnetic flux density inside a toroid. So this only tells me uh, how can I get a much bigger, higher magnetic fields and magnetic flux density. Well, you can simply get it if you get a magnetic material, if you get toroid and you increase the number of loop conductors with n loops you will increase if you put two loops of conductor you will get two times higher magnetic flux density if you put three or four or ten loops of conductor you will get ten times higher magnetic field because of that what is inductance we have our coils inductance is in all, all electric uh, uh, elements computers uh, etc. Well, how do you get a large inductance? You can see that they are all our, uh, the, uh, the conductor with loops around some toro toroids. So that is the way how you get a bigger higher magnetic field. How do you get a higher inductance, higher elements? And because of this, this is the reason why our transformer is actually, I have very large number of conductors of conductors loops that's and why my motors also have a large number of magnetic of conductor loops if i want to create a, a, a large magnetic static field how do i do it well i took i take magnetic 
material and I I built a large number of conductor loops inside it. And that's the way how I get a much higher magnetic field. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.